Hey guys, it's Jaylon. Welcome or welcome back. I'm here today to share with you my update for Project Yarnathon. This is a crafting, knitting, crochet related project and it was created by Andrea. The goal is to knit up or crochet or use in some way a marathon's worth of yarn. And I'm doing this very, very slowly. I'm not going through my yarn very, very fast, but I do have my knitting mojo back, so I am very excited about that. Now, I do have several items that I finished that I wanna share with you. Before I forget, I will leave Andrea's channel information down below. I'm sure you guys know her, Pretty as a Peacock. I will include that information down below as well as the folks that I know are participating in this project as well. I also started a, I kind of created and started a project called Get Your Craft On, which was for the month of January, a group of us cast on or started some kind of crafty project for every day of the month of, uh, every day in the month of January. So in last month's update, I did go over several of the items that I had cast on. I'm gonna show you some of like the rest of them that I've cast on since then. And of course, we'll, we're gonna go through all the things I finished. So that's what I'm gonna start with first is what I finished, but I did wanna share with you Leading into this month, I had knit up 7,261 yards and a marathon is 4,000, um, sorry, a marathon, a marathon's worth of yarn is 46,145 yards and I had 38,884 yards remaining towards my marathon. So I have a ways to go. But let me go ahead and share with you my finished items. There are one, two, three, five here. I'm very happy with that. I'm going to start, the first few that I'm gonna start with are dishcloths. Now these are the same pattern. The pattern I knit up, I think this is grandma's, grandma's dishcloth. And I will try to put pictures up here and link the patterns down below if I remember. Anyway, this, I finished this green one here. This was cast on now. There's a, a little bit of staining. It's from another project that I have here. It doesn't matter, it's a dishcloth. I will be using this one. So this is the dishcloth. And these knit up fairly quickly. I used, this is a cotton yarn. I think it's tacky. T-A-H-K-I, that's the brand. No, this is, I'm sorry, this is not tacky. This is P Pishka <laughs> cotton. Anyway, this ended up using up a total of 55 yards. So 55 yards here. I also finished the same pattern dishcloth in this pink cotton. This is a bit more of a mercerized cotton and this is the tacky yarn cotton. And yeah, so I finished this one. I blocked these, but then I folded them up. <laughs> and this one used up a total of 50 yards. So 105 yards between the two of them knit up. The next thing I finished is a hat. Now I have finished one of these before. This is the Latu hat. And let me see if I can figure out the designer. The Latu hat was designed by Meiju KP. I don't know if I said that correctly, but anyway, I knit it with some Madeline Tosh DK Merino, the singles, and here is the hat. So this is actually a gift knit for a friend of mine, and I loved, I love how this turned out. I, I love this pattern so much. There we go. Maybe you can get a better idea of what it looks like. It's such an easy pattern to do. The cable is super easy, it's gorgeous. Anyway, this was, again, like I said, knit with Madeline Tosh, Tosh Merino DK, the shade is Tarte. And I used a total of 170 yards in this one. Then I finished a beautiful cow. Now, of course, there's some cat hair on here because when I was blocking this, Milo and Ziggy, they all wanted to sleep on it. Anyway, here is kind of the, let me just put it on. It doesn't really match what I'm wearing, but oh, it's okay. Oh. Maybe I should have worn this 
in my introduction. Anyway, there's the cowl. It's you can loop it up twice. I think the original pattern had it like over the shoulders. Like something like this. Anyway, <laughs> it's very cozy. I knit this with Malabrigo worsted and the stitch pattern on this is just so pretty. You can, I think, is that where I joined? Yeah, you can see that's where I joined. This was knit back and forth and then you kitchener it together. So you can see it doesn't match up perfectly, but it matches up pretty well. Anyway, the color of this is Uva, U-V-A, and I used a total of 405 yards to knit this guy. We'll just keep it on because it's pretty. Doesn't match my lipstick, but I don't care. And the last thing that I finished is a set of fire pit mitts. Now I have not woven the ends on this yet, but I did finish them since the last update, so I wanted to share them with you. These are them here. I the the pattern calls for them to be a bit longer, but and like longer in the in the cuff as well as longer on the hand. But I am knitting this for my friend Valerie. She's asked me to knit several of these for her for her for her students, and the length is what she was needing. So anyway, there's a pair of fire pit mitts. I am using Cascade. Oh, let's see, what is it? 100% superwash wool, it's 220 superwash. This is one of the colors I will be knitting the, another pair in. I'm knitting, I think a total of nine. So there's one, I'm, you know, 10% there. So here is what's left of the first ball. It ended up using 44 grams. So I ended up, the, these mitts alone are 100 yards. So I can get two pairs of mitts out of one ball, which is awesome. Okay, so all of that, all of these hand knits, I was able to knit up a total of 777 yards in the month of, well, since the last update, which gives me a remaining balance for my yarnathon of 38,107 yards. And that's from a percentage standpoint, I'm 17.4% to my goal. I was 16% last month, so we're eking along. <laughs> okay, now let me share with you the items that I am working on or that I started. So I had mentioned the things that I wanted to cast on during Get Your Craft On, which I'm going to link up here. I did make some edits because some of the things I decided not to do. This is one of them. I actually ended up changing my mind about this. This yarn is, it's by Mustache. It's her like perfectly matching sock yarn. And this is the shade Be Mine, I believe. Yeah, Be Mine. Now this was a short skein. So it was a total of 73.5 grams. It was discounted because of that reason. So I decided I was originally going to make footy socks, but I decided that I would rather have like yoga socks. And that's because in the winter, my feet get cold. And if I want to paint my toes, it'd be nice to have a pair of socks I can put on while painting my toes. So these are yoga socks and I have cast them on. I just, so this is two by two ribs. So you can tell it's going to stretch widthwise. It's going to lose length because it's going to stretch widthwise. But I did just split for the heel. So I think that I'll put a picture of the pattern I'm using. I don't think I wrote it down but it's basically a tube sock with a, a space for your heel to go in. Anyway, so that's how this is knitting up. Now I'm excited because I'm getting to the part of the skein where you can see like the, the yellow and the, the blue, which I, I'm excited to see how that knits up. So anyway, cast on those, I'm about a quarter of the way there. I also cast on a pair of stripey socks. I love self-striping yarn. By the way, if you haven't noticed, I love it. It's one of my favorite things to knit with. It's mindless knitting. I love taking it with me whenever I travel on a plane. I can just watch my movie and knit until the cows come home. So I cast on a very simple stripey sock. So this is basically how I'm, where I am right now. I typically will just knit a tube and then do an, uh, an afterthought heel by cutting into the knitting and splitting for my heel. And here is my ball of yarn. This is Knitterly Things 
sock yarn and the shade the colorway is algae it's gorgeous i love her stuff she is still dying which makes me so excited i'm happy to see her still around anyway so i started that and I've, i got pretty far sometimes i'll bring a project like this with me to bed when i'm tired but i'm not ready to fall asleep and i'll just turn the tv on and just knit away until i finally i'm like i'm so tired i have to go to bed so this is this was one of those projects another self striping uh project I, I may have cast this on last time but i did knit up on it quite a bit so again another this one is cuff down this is actually a pattern and the pattern for this is smooth operator socks by susan susan b anderson so that's how this is knitting up this is another skein of knittily things and the colorway is verbena i have so much of her yarn i'm trying to work through my older stash and so i pulled out some of the older self-striping yarns that i have and i'm loving how that's knitting up okay this was a last minute addition there were several there were like three or four projects that kind of towards the end of the month of January, I was like, I don't want to do that one. <laughs> so I didn't, I was like, I'm not going to force it. So I wound up a couple of other skeins of yarn and this is one of them. I actually had some friends help me pick this one out. This is also a very old skein of yarn. It's by the brand Snitches and this is the shade Planetary. I feel like this was a anyway, it, she's, I don't think she's, she's no longer around. Anyway, I was just going to knit up a quick you know, self-striping pair of socks. I'm finding that a lot of the socks that I've knit because I've been knitting socks for so long, they're starting to develop holes and I'm not the biggest fan of darning sock socks that I've worn. I mean, cause they're already worn to heck. <laughs> I mean like they're the bottom, bottom part of the foot's felted. So I'm like, I don't, I, I don't see the point. I've saved several cause I'm thinking maybe I can darn them and give them to charity, but I don't know if that's weird. Anyway, I haven't figured out what I'm going to do with it. So here is, I actually took this with me traveling. So I have finished a sock. Well, I finished the tube. So I have, my, I started the toe and I do a Turkish cast on, how appropriate because I'm Turkish, but I do a Turkish cast on toe and then I do the increases and then I knit until like for my size foot, this is around seven and a quarter. And then typically I just, once the toe and body are kind of the same length, then I will start the ribbing. And I typically just do a one by one rib. And then I, I mark where my heel is going to go. So what I will do, what an afterthought heel is, if you don't know, is I will snip one of these legs in where that stitch marker is and take it out on to basically take it out to the ed either either edge and then pick up the stitches with my needle and start working on the heel. That's how I do it. Anyway, so I did finish this recently on a work trip, this one sock, and I haven't cast on the second one. Oh, yes, I did. Hold on. Yeah, I mean, barely. I started to work on this on the plane and then I fell asleep. So there's my teeny tiny little toe. <laughs> so I'll get to working on that one probably on my next trip. What's next? What's in this bag? It's like Christmas. Okay, this is Barley Sugar by Isolde Teague. This is the yarn I pulled fingering weight and I will pretty much use up the entire skinny yarn and then uh, kitchener it together. So it's typically more of a neck cowl versus a loopy cowl. All right, the next thing I have here is the litmus cowl. Now I believe I had cast this on. Oh, I dropped some stitches, hold on. So this is the, as I mentioned, this is the litmus cowl. The litmus cowl is designed by Amy Florence Edwards Green. It's a free pattern. And I'm basically striping up a set, a mini skein set that I have from Fiber Optic with, oh, this is Madeline Tosh. I think, it, no, I think this is, oh shoot, now I can't remember. Plucky Knitter. And this is her Primo Fingering and Barely Birch. And basically what I did with my little mini skein is I just wound the whole thing into a ball and I used magic knot to tie everything together, but I'm not going to knit with the knot in my project. I'm just taking it out and I, I 
I'm going to basically have the same number of rows as that first color and striping it with the gray. So I did, I think I had cast this on, but I did make some progress on it. I hadn't started working on the gray yet. I actually went to a knit night at my local yarn store. There's a yarn store like down the street from me. It's Knit Dallas. It's just opened in November. I'm so excited there's a yarn store right there. And they have a knit night on Wednesday nights. And so I went a couple of weeks ago and took this project with me and it was actually a lot of fun. So I'm probably gonna do that more frequently. Okay, so this one. I think I also maybe had started this before my last update, but I made a ton of progress on this one. Uh oh, I'm losing, I'm losing something. Anyway, so this is the Granny Stripe Blanket and by Pearl Soho, and I pretty much crocheted an entire skein of yarn in here. So this is going to be a project where I have like 10, 11, 12 skeins of yarn that are going to be included in this, different colors, and it's going to be stri a stripe of gray in between each color pattern. And I have not continued to work on this because I'm because once I figured out how long this is, I realized that I needed more yarn and I need to make sure that the color story that I put together is what I want and then figure out what the sequence is. So I stopped at the first one. I still don't have all the yarn yet because I haven't figured out exactly what I'm going to order. I'm probably going to figure out some of that stuff tonight so I can get that on the way to me. But yeah, a whole skein. This is so squishy and adorable. I love it. But have not worked on that since I finished that one skein. And one skein is like 400 and something yards. So it took a lot. Moving on. The next project I have is another stripey yarn project, stripey sock project. This is yarn by the brand Canon. I think it's Canon Hand Eyes. Yeah, Canon Hand Eyes. This color is Rainbow Drops. It's part of the chocolate Charlie and the Chocolate Factory collection. And it has six stri self striping colors. And this particular ball of yarn, actually, whenever, whenever it was in the skein form, Ziggy, when he was a kitten, and he still does it now, but not so bad. But he, when he was a kitten, he found this skein of yarn and manhandled it to the point where I could not, it, like, it was a tangled mess. It took me years to untangle it. I mean, he's three now, or he's going to be three in April. Years to untangle it. And when I finally untangled it, I went ahead and caked it up and I was like, you know what? I'll have it around in case I need to cast on a project. So I went ahead and used it to cast on. I am loving how this is striping up. I think that is so pretty. So anyway, again, sim simple self stripey sock pattern that I always do. I love these. It's my mindless knitting. All right. Next, I have a very, very old skein from Sundara. This is the shade Crushed Cherries. And I cast on a pair of socks. This is Vestigial Socks by Beta Jezek, aka he Hedgehog Fiber. She's the owner of Hedgehog Fibers. So, I mean, all I have is the cuff. That's all I have. And that's the way it's knitting up so far. So I do have a little bit of flash pooling here with the with the cream part of that skein of yarn, but we'll see how it ends up looking once I get to the body of the sock. And I want to say this is this is actually the reason why it took me so long. This is a uh, twisted rib, which takes forever and it hurts my wrists. So anyway, that basically just started that one. I haven't even gotten to the body of the sock yet. All right, next I have, oh, okay. This poor skein of yarn. Here is the skein of yarn. This is by Western Sky Knits. It's her Willow Sport sock, which is like almost 380 yards. And the shade is Tinkerbell. So this originally was, I don't remember, even remember the pattern that I had it in, but I didn't like how the yarn was pooling. You can see it tell it's very, very, very variegated. Very, very variegated. <laughs> So this was going to be the Prairie Socks, Prairie Spring Socks. And I don't have, let me see if I can figure out who the designer of that is. So the designer of the Prairie Spring Socks is Samantha Meyer. 
as I was knitting it up, I didn't like the way it was pulling either. So I was like, what am I going to do with this skein of yarn? Because it's a beautiful skein and I wanted to do something with it. So I went with a fallback uh, pattern. I've knit this pattern twice now. So this is my third time to knit it. And the socks are called Labor and Socks. So the designer of the Labor and Socks is Pepperknit. It's spelled L-E-Y-B-U-R-N. Anyway, so this is where I am. I literally just started this, this, I mean, the I got through the toe and like a couple of repeats of this. I do see some flashing. So I'm still not 100% certain this is going to be what I end up doing with this. We will see. Can see the back there there's some I may just end up knitting these and leaving the way leaving them the way they are I it may just be oh, I was thinking I may combine this with some mohair so if this ends up being still what I don't I don't like how it looks I will rip it out and then find a way to combine it with a mohair maybe swatch a couple of different colors of lace weight mohair with this to see what it looks like and then we'll go from there but that's what's going on with the sock. It's kind of driving me crazy. Like maybe it just doesn't want to be a pair of socks. This, the yarn's like, nope, we're not going to be socks. The next pattern I have is Rayeries. Now this is a pattern. Let me see if I can get the designer of this one. This is a pattern that I decided to cast on kind of last minute. The pattern Rayeries was created by Amy Miller, or designed by Amy Miller. And I am kind of copying... I have inspiration from Cat Reading who used a skein of hand spun with a just a very neutral color and striped them together. So that's what I decided to do. This is the very beginning of this. I don't have very much of it, but that's, I mean, that's all I have. But let me show you the yarn. It's probably more exciting. Here is, this is from Plucky Knitter. I think this is high cotton. And let me see if I have the tag to see what the colorway is. This is Wintry Mix. The shade is Wintry Mix. And this is my hand spun. It's a recent skein that I finished. And this is yarn that I, or fiber that I dyed called My Little Pony. And I Navajo plied it into a fingering weight yarn. And that's what I'm going to stripe this with. So I think it is four four color stripes yeah four color stripes so that's basically all I have I have a I have it on a provisional cast on which is why there's that blue yarn there so very very beginning stages of that one all right the next pattern I have well this is like very again like I barely started this this is my scrappy granny stripe blanket and I basically just did the cast on and then I have my, my very, very long cast on and then I started my first row. So this is going to be basically a stripey leftovers blanket with all of my leftovers. And I just grabbed a handful of leftovers and put them in this bag and then I'll just grab one and crochet with it. So that is what this is. It's going to be a very, very long-term project. <laughs> okay, I basically have a cuff on this. This is the Pilea Mitts, and this is basically what I have. It's very, very, very beginning stages. The pattern was was designed by Katerina Lin Linhagen. I'm sorry, Katerina, your pattern is beautiful, but all I can think about is Linhagen from Crazy Stupid Love so funny anyway here's the yarn I'm using this is by the brand knitting notions and it's their classic merino sock in the shade berry this is a, like one of the first yarns I ever bought at a fest fiber festival I went to one in Portland and just went ham and bought all the yarn and I've had that one in my stash for years so so excited I'm finally knitting it up the next thing I have is progress on a previous project this has been on my needles forever the pattern is Muji painting painting by Lies Van de Sande and I'm using Sandara yarns let's see this is her Lace Silky Merino in the shade Rhythm of the Saints. And this is, I mean, it's basically, I'll show, I'm sure, I'll, hopefully I would have put a picture up there. 
but this is basically just lace stockinette knitting forever and ever but I have very little progress since the last update but I do like to kind of mark where I was before and that's how much I knit this is another one that I like to knit while I'm you know just kind of hanging out in bed but I do have to kind of watch this one I can't really not look down at my hands because this one is I have a tendency to pick up the stitch underneath it when I'm knitting because it's such fine fine yarn so I have to be a bit more careful with this one but I did make some progress a little bit a little bit is better than nothing all right and then I have two more projects to talk about so this one is going to be the Hannah Hat by Blake Ehrlich. This is also for a friend. I'm using this yarn. This is Madeline Tosh DK in the shade Jade. I freaking love this color so much. And I literally just have a cast on. I mean, I have some ribbing and I've lost some stitches. Hold on. Yeah, I have some ribbing and that's it. It's basically a hat. You knit back and forth for a while for the button band. And then I'll eventually join it in the round. But yeah, just, you know, four rows and that's it. The last project I want to share with you is how I'm doing on my sweater. This is my Boxy by Hohi Locatelli. I am knitting this with Madeline Tosh, Tosh Marina Light in the shade Flash Dance. That's one of the balls I'm working with. And last update, I actually showed you what this was looking like. It's, it was current, well, I had put together the shoulder seams and I was talking about how I would want to, once I finished everything from casting on all the stuff from January, that I wanted to get back to this. And now I'm like determined to finish it because I do have some progress on this. So here is how this one is looking. It's really, I don't think I'm going to be able to get it in frame. Hold on. Yeah, it takes up the entire entire thing anyway so here is what this one is looking like this is a very oversized sweater I did not knit it to the specifications that were listed in the pattern like I, I did not want 10 inches of positive ease I basically used the smallest size and then knit a little bit smaller than that so since the last update I have started to seam the sides here now I didn't go all the way down because I don't know if you guys remember, but there was the back of this project. I accidentally cast on with the wrong size needles. And to be honest with you guys, I don't know if I can tell the difference. So here is the back. And well, let me see if I can do this. So this is the back and this is the front. And I cannot tell a difference at all. So I'm thinking I may just because I thought that I was going to have to rip out the back up until I before I switch needles and re-knit them. But I don't know if I'm going to need to do that because I I can't tell the difference. <laughs> anyway, I went ahead and just seemed to that point. So, you know, but I left room for the I have my armhole here just in case I need to rip it out. I don't know if I'm going to have to. Anyway, so I did seam up like half the sides and then I added the collar. I actually added the collar last night. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up for the sleeves and I hear the sleeves go quicker or quickly, which I'm so excited. I may have a sweater out by the time we do this update next month. I'm so excited. This is such a, I mean, I've been, I haven't been working on this as long as some of my other projects, but it's definitely, wait, what happened here? Oh, did I drop a stitch? I dropped a stitch. No, I did not drop a stitch. Okay. So I, I thought I dropped a stitch, but I didn't. This right here, I don't know if you can tell, there's a little piece hanging out. So I split the yarn and I'm going to have to just tack this down on the back side so that it doesn't, yeah, I'll just, I'll tack that down somehow. I'm not ripping that out. Uh-uh. We'll figure out a way to make it work. Anyway. So yeah, I'm hoping I can have this finished. Like I said, it's not something that I've been working on quite as long as some of my other projects, but it's a sweater. And I haven't knit a sweater for myself in a very long time. So I'm so excited about this one.
Anyway, those are all the things that I have been knitting. So I share with you the items that I finished, the items that I'm working on. I don't have any plans on to cast on anything new except for more fire pit mitts. So I can get those, uh, you know, get as many as I can finish and send over to Valerie as soon as possible. So that is my update. I'm sorry this video is so long. <laughs> These moving forward won't be so long because I won't be working on so many projects. I'll cherry pick and I kind of want to work on a big project, an easy project and a more complicated project and try to get through them as, as quickly as I can. So anyway, that is going to be it for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hopefully you're doing well and staying safe. Please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Come here. Well, hello, sir. Hi. Come here. Come here. He wants to be touched when he wants to be touched. Hey. Hey. No. You're not feeling it? Not in the mood? Okay. Okay, bye!